I'm going to call the meeting to order at this time and just welcome everybody here tonight. Uh, this is our uh, semi-monthly uh, board meeting of trustees. Glad that you're here. Uh, we like to begin uh, all of our meetings with a prayer for guidance. And John, if you would do that tonight, we'd appreciate it. Thank you, Jim. We bow our heads, please. Our dear Heavenly Father, we, we just thank you for this beautiful day, and we, we thank you for this opportunity to serve here at Georgetown Township. We, we pray for your wisdom, Lord, and we just thank you for all the blessings that you've given us here in the community. We pray tomorrow for the school starting and for the kids and for the teachers, and we just pray that you keep these kids safe. And again, we thank you for the opportunity for our community. We think of our employees here at school at, at, at Georgetown that do a wonderful job with our community. And we pray for our first responders that you keep them safe, dear Lord. We thank you today that we're able to dedicate a new library and the service that this will provide the community and help all of us to grow and make this a fantastic community, continue to make it a fantastic community to live. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for this opportunity tonight. In your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 We stand with us in the saying of our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. you may be seated. You know, I, I like the way we begin our meetings, and uh, it, it's not... Uh, just a given. I know that uh, if you've read recently in the news in Georgia where they had in, in one charter school, I guess they tried to do away with the Pledge of Allegiance and replace it with um, kind of a chant, I think, their mascot or something, some sort of chant. And the parents rose up and said, no, let's continue that tradition. And then also, I think I mentioned last year, and, and I don't know if I ever replied later, but the Sixth Circuit was con uh, considering a case involving the city of Jackson. They would open their meetings like ours here with prayer. And it was challenged at the district court level, and they lost. Went up to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, and uh, they had to have it decided what they call in banc, which means with all the justices. I think there's like 15. And it uh, it passed. It wasn't by an overwhelming majority, but it, it passed, or rather it was upheld. Mm -hmm. And so uh, these things do, you know, from time to time, uh, have to be preserved and they're challenged. And a son is actually working now for a judge in the Sixth Circuit, so I get more inside uh, information, which is which is pretty neat. <laughs> in fact, um, he, in honor of on Sunday, had lunch with Justice Sotomayor. Is that how you pronounce that? Mm -hmm. At the judge's house, so uh, with 20 people. So it was very, you know, it was a very intimate gathering. It was a real, a real privilege. So anyway, I said, did you ask me a question? I said, Dad, I just... I just sat in back and made sure I didn't, didn't do something embarrassing. So, anyway. Um, all right. I uh, see that everyone is here tonight. I'd like to begin with a quote. Uh, this is a more updated quote or from someone here who's current, and that is a budget is it's about budgets, since we're going to be talking about budgets tonight. A budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. And who said that, John? Dave Ramsey. Here you go. Dave Ramsey. I know that he teaches Dave Ramsey. So, uh, dispensing grandmother's advice daily. <laughs> There's a good one right there. A budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. All right. Um, item number five, approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Support. Who did support it? Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. All right. The agenda is approved. Uh, item number six, uh, communications, letters, and reports received by this board for information. Uh, so I trust that everyone is reviewing those minutes and, and expenditures as they come through. This time, uh, Dan had wanted me to make sure that he had an opportunity to give us a construction update. We've got a few things going on around the township, one of which seems uh, much more obvious out in front of us here. So, Dan, if you would take it away. She's bringing it up here, a couple of slides for you. Do that now. So, uh, first, it's just a notification from Granville. They're having a public hearing, a uh, public open house, to actually look at uh, called a road diet, a couple of the roads, and they have jurisdiction over Kenoa, which is a border road. And so, I just want to point that out that they're having that meeting on September 6th, and that'll be obviously quite quickly. So, from four to seven, for people who have 
input or would like to give input on looking at different lane layouts for Kenway Avenue. That's where they go from like four to three with a turn lane and a little bike. Yeah, so if you look at the north part of Kenway, north of 36 is already in that format where they have bike lanes and uh, the different formats. So that's what they're looking at and they're gaining public input from that now. But obviously it's a border road, so they sent that to us. So go ahead, Minette. <coughs> Uh, we're painting another water tower, and, you know, we did two last year. We're doing two this year. Just to give you an idea, I mean, that's a nice blanket they have to put around it, and you can see they raised that up, and this is kind of the inside. The picture doesn't show, but that's, they've done a nice job painting it on the inside. So go ahead, Minette. This is Edson Drive. This is just to give you an idea of working in a neighborhood. Um, this is a picture from somebody's house. This is coming in from their house. That's the lateral. You can see the lines they have to cross. Uh, in an existing road, you know, you have different pipes going through, and so the lateral has to go underneath there to get to that house. So it's, it's quite a big job, and, you know, it just takes a long time when they're working in an existing neighborhood. This is Cottonwood. You can see the culvert, and you can see this is our sewer line, and you can see it goes right through that culvert. Uh, you can see the different lines that are coming in here. This is that line now gone. If you go to the next slide, you can see the new pipe, just to give you a scale of that, of the new pipe, and this is the hole for where that line will go in the new pipe. Just wow. to give you an idea how big the lines are under the ground. Wow. That person's standing there in that pipe, so. That's it. Is there, oh, oh, yes, one more. Uh, the, a, a few of you are here today, and uh, you can see the dedication, and you can see a little construction has started for the library, so uh, that's just the uh, first start there, so. <laughs> I told those that were there today, this was my Michael Dukakis moment with the tank helmet, you know. <laughs> it doesn't look right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dan, for that update. Item number seven, this is our first public comment period for those who are here tonight and would like to address the board. Uh, I've explained it before, but just to be clear, you're allowed to speak at this time to any items on the agenda tonight. Really, there's two main items. There's the sewer rates uh, changes, and then there's also the matter of the uh, tentative uh, preliminary adoption of the budget and then a study of a public hearing. So if you wish to speak to either of those issues, now is your opportunity to do that. And you'll have another opportunity uh, toward the end of the meeting. When that opportunity comes, you can speak about anything you like. All right? All we ask is that when you come forward, you give us your name and, and your address and you may address the board. Is there anyone in this first public comment that would like to address the board? Thank you, ma'am. As you come to... Um, I tend to point this out too, which is that we're we're right now taking in and listening. So um, don't be surprised if you're not getting immediate feedback or, or debate or what have you. So thank you, ma'am. My name is Kim Banzaro. I live at 2520 Edson Drive. I'm here to address your sewer rates. We have been trying. My neighbors, I have Volvix and Lights on either side of us. The three of us together are trying to get together with somebody to put them in. But because there is such a huge demand to put this in, your, your time period for the 1-1-2019 one, one, or whatever that is you've got on there is just not applicable. It doesn't work. We've been trying. We've been trying to connect with people. And with everybody that you guys have that has to do this, we are failing in getting anybody to come by us. And because there's three of us, we want to do it together. It makes it cheaper for them. It makes it easier for us. And it makes it definitely easier for them. However, we're having a hard time. And so I want to put that out there because I see your rate increase from, like, the six-inch pipe from 18000 to 28000 I mean, that is a big jump in price. And we are doing our best to try to get things going. And I just want to let you guys know that there's people out there trying. We're trying to get it together. And they did say that it's easier if the three of us did it together. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that people are trying. Instead of doing this time period on us, I thought we had till April, but I guess, you know, they're trying to get us done. So I just want to let you guys know that the neighbors are working on this and cannot afford your rate increase. So. Thank you, Kim. And, and I'm sure that will be discussed here as part of that budget point tonight because you're not the target of that, okay? Right. You're not intended to be. So thank you for bringing that up. Anyone else at this time? Avenue. I just heard about this thing here. Why 
the increase. Okay. I would, yeah, well, I know you're not going to whatever, but okay. I would like to know why the increase. That's a fair question, yep. And I was talking to someone because I talked to a lot of people, and I told you guys about the 90-year-old in Bible for Missions who are having a heart attack because they think you're going to slap a lien on their house because they don't have the money to put it in. So I'd like to address that. I'd like you to address that. And you and I have talked before a little bit about where's the human side of it, not the politics side, not whatever, the human side of it. you got to look at these people. They're senior citizens, and they are seriously scared to death that you're going to put a lien on their house. That's wrong. You know, it is wrong, right? Right. And now the increase, I don't even get. So if they don't hook up, I just want to understand, if they don't hook up by your lim your first, what was your first deadline? It's going to pay a deposit by the end of the year, if I'm not mistaken, but that's just a deposit. Okay, so that, there's a deposit by the end of the year. And then what was your, if they can't have the deposit by the end of the year, then now the increase goes that, that's something then that you're throwing out another question. You okay, like so another yeah. question. Okay. Yep. And, but why such a jump? What different, I mean, you can't tell me that it's going to, there's another question. You can't, can you possibly and seriously tell me that it's going to cost that much more if somebody has to wait until ta dum ta dum? Because Tim's right. The plumbers are going, you know, the guys that are putting the pipes in are going crazy. You know, we told them, you know, we paid you guys, we paid them, whatever, but we said, Get to it when you can, you know. I'm not dying to get hooked up, and i got a bunch of plants to move. And But anyway, so there's my other question. And then I guess I want to know how you can justify the sewer hookup with senior, senior, senior citizens. And I'm not talking about myself. I'm a senior citizen, too. But I'm talking about 80-, 90-year-old people who – my mother lived on $650 a month Social Security. Now, there wasn't room in there. For a new toilet or a new whatever, there wasn't. She barely, if it wasn't for in, uh, kids, I don't know what she would have done. She wouldn't have eaten. Um, it barely covered her her condo rent stuff and whatever else, and if she was going to have uh, coffee with her friends. So yeah, those are my questions, and I I guess I seriously would like to know from you guys as people, you gotta be feeling some kind of a twinge of cheapers. I feel bad about. And if you could possibly, I understand there's a senior, some sort of affordable program that seniors can get. I don't think most of them know about it. So I think that it would be great if you could put it on the on your page and say, okay, Georgetown Township is here to help you, <laughs> and and actually let them know where they can get that help. So, but those are my questions. Thank you, Carol. Well said. Yep. Anyone? Anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, John Cage, 7869 Parkside Court, Jennison. Um, item number nine on your agenda is the 2019 budget. Mm -hmm. And for the library, that shows 12,400,000 and some change. I'm assuming the 12 million is for the actual construction and 400,000 is for um, the operating of it. I'm guessing that. However, two weeks ago, and you're, you revise your 2018 budget and put $2 million in for the library. So does that – so right now you've got the library at $14 million. If you've got $2 million in 18 and $12 million in 19, it's $14 million. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to stop at $12 million. Mm -hmm. So shouldn't the if – if what I'm saying is correct, shouldn't the library in the 2019 budget – the ten million four hundred thousand, not twelve million four hundred thousand, because you've got the other two million in the eighteen budget. Mm -hmm. Excellent question. Yep, one that, in fact, a number of us board members asked at the budget meeting this past week, so it will be addressed here as part of that point. Yep. Okay. Thank That's you. Good question. Thanks, John. Anybody else at this time? Hi, my name is Liz Vanderluck, 1391 Woodland Street. Um, I'm here to address some of the sewer costs, too. We're a young family that just moved in to Jenison. I grew up in Granville. And this sudden surprise of having to convert over from a septic tank to city sewer has really put a burden on our family. And so I'd ask if you could consider 
potentially putting the cost for new construction and new builds, not for the current residents. Um, you know, my son has to take medicine that's not covered by our insurance. So it's getting to the point, if this goes through, do we have to choose between medicine for our child or paying these costs? And so we bought this house based on a budget that we can afford, and it's really disappointing to find out that all these hidden costs are coming. So I just asked for, as you mentioned, the elderly families in our community and the young families who are just starting out, if you could please consider these costs for new builds instead of current residents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else at this time? Okay. We will um, we'll be addressing that here momentarily then. We've got the item 8 consent agenda. Is there any uh, item on that agenda anyone wishes to remove? Otherwise, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support. And supported. Any comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. That is passed. Uh, item 9 now. This is the budget item that we've been both discussing and hearing about. So I'd like someone, if you would, on the board to place this before the board. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the resolution with the tentative budget and to tentatively adopt the 2019 budget and to schedule a public hearing for September 10, 2018. Support. All right. So it's been moved and supported. Uh, before I throw it open to comments of the board here and, and for the benefit of the public here who maybe weren't able to join us this past week, we, we always have a budget um, meeting. We had it last week, uh, Monday, uh, and uh, at that time, questions like John's uh, were addressed. A lot of questions, a lot of um, a give and take. Sometimes we do those things directly uh, with our superintendent as he invites us to contact him directly with comments, questions, suggestions. And we spent uh, time there as well at that meeting addressing what we're putting before you tonight so that um, I always like to say that because if you don't hear a great deal of discussion here at this time, it's not that the board has no questions or that they um, uh, you know, didn't make investigation or won't continue to do so because as Dan hastens to tell us, uh, whether it be tonight, whether it be you know, after the public hearing, whether it be at the time of the final adoption or even after the final adoption, coming up through the Finance Committee by way of a budget amendment, um, there's always avenues to um, address uh, a question or uh, an item of concern that's in our budget. So with that having been prefaced, I throw it up into the board, whether it's to uh, uh, discuss anything further that you wish here relating to the budget or just to answer uh, some of the concerns that were mentioned tonight from the public. Anyone? Can we start with the library um, yeah. budget? And if I remember accurately, now last Monday was not my most shining day. We had a lot of family stuff going on, and I was slightly distracted. But correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we amended our 2018 budget so that we would have money in our budget to cover library expenses that would be incurred in 2018. But we don't know exactly when all of those bills are going to come due and some of them might be in 2019. And so we are still committed to not going over the $12 million, um, but we have to give a little flexibility on both sides for when bills come due on the library. Is that accurate? I thought that was said pretty well. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, in so many that. words. So, John, for exactly your benefit right. anyone else's too. So by allocating $2 million, we weren't sure we are going to spend up to that much this year. How far are they going to get? Whatever we don't spend of that is then included in the remaining you know, portion of the budget, but that the two years combined will still equal the $12 million budget. So we're not changing that that uh, that ceiling. So, but uh, for not that being for not feeling the yeah. best, and I think we did well. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. one other item that hmm. the assumption that it was 11 million and 400,000. It's really 10 million for next year. I mean, sorry, 11 million and then 1.4. So 1.4 for operating, all right, as all opposed right. to, you know, it's, it's it's 11 plus two to get to 13 with 1 million. Not sure in which year it would be. All right, the difference here between construction and general operation costs that right. we incur yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah, good point. All right, there's been a motion of support, then discussion. Uh, and I think I asked Dan, has anybody 
Are there any open issues that have been raised since our budget meeting with him? And he indicated that there weren't any open uh, issues that hadn't been addressed. So uh, this is a roll call vote. On the, uh, the first page, which wasn't included in the budget at the workshop, uh, it says uh, 2.75 mils. Um, I'd still like to see that at 2.25 or 2. Referring to the first page. Yeah, very first page. No. Yes, he's talking. Oh, okay. All right. I might have got that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's the proposed millage rate, yeah. Yep, yep. All right, so the the proposal has been made to change the millage rate, if I heard that. No, no. no. Just to address. He, he didn't make that. that. Okay. No, kind of make sure. just seeing if there's any interest for discussion. Right. Use that as a point of interest. Okay, but I meant that when I said proposal, I didn't mean something to vote on as much as here's, a, here's an idea, here's a suggestion. And that, too, um, I think was discussed uh, last week, Monday evening. Um, I'll just I'll speak to it for the benefit of again for those who are, are either watching or listening. Um, there was give and take about that subject. Uh, there was there was the understanding. I think that the majority of the board still felt as though the current um, millage rate was uh, proper, uh, adequate, low uh, comparatively, and that um, I think at this point in time, with regard to uh, you know the needs of the township that we are comfortable as a whole, and I can't speak for all of you, but I got the sense that night that the majority was comfortable with uh, keeping the millage rate where it is at this time. Yep, and I just, I always bring it up just because we, I mean, we apparently have the 12 million for the library, so, um, and as we all know, last year we overtaxed our residents to the tune of 2.5 million, so we have an overabundance of cash, so here's an opportunity to, um, give something back to our residents. And I think my still not affect our services. Yeah. We could I think my response to Michael at the meeting was we're pleased that you went from feeling that we had raided our surplus and we're in dire need of uh, money to now feeling that we have too much. So um, Oh no, we're still raided. Pleased. <laughs> well you can't take both sides. But that's right. I mean that's why we made that decision or I didn't make the decision to sell the ice arena for it just an incredibly low price. And also the cell towers, that was another panic cell. Okay. Um, um, come up with that 12 million. Dig, right. Digging through the couch cushions for money. Right, right, okay. okay. All right. So I don't want to trigger you now. <laughs> no, I, I think you're triggered. So uh, it was not a panic sale, a thoughtful sale, and it was one that was not made for the purpose of funding the library. So I think that's a misleading statement. Um, but. Uh, Aside from that, since we don't agree on the change in the mill trades, is there anyone else who has a point of discussion? Otherwise? Well, I would just say that, you know, we are one of the lowest in the whole area. We need to compare ourselves to uh, the city of Granville, the city of Wyoming. Um, I don't have that list with me. I should have brought that tonight. But um, that is one reason why we have so many people that are moving to this township, because our, our rate is 2.275. and a lot of the other ones, Hudsonville is um, three times higher, four times higher, Granville is, Wyoming is, so I think we do very well. All right, Mr. Clerk, would you call the roll? Yes. Clerk votes yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Mr. Schwann? Yes. Mr. Bosch? No. Mr. Manier? Yes. Mrs. Skolma? Yes. Mr. Muriga. Yes, Kerry. All right, thank you. Item 10, this is the water sewer connection charges. Uh, here again, if we could have a motion place the, uh, the issue before the board, and then we can have discussion. I'll make the motion to approve the updated water and sewer connection fees as recommended by the Utilities Committee. I'll support that. And move to support it. Discussion, as I said with the last point, uh, either to address uh, this from your perspective as a board member and uh, those of you on the utilities committee if you wish to speak to that or those not as well. And then some of the questions that were raised tonight from the um, from those that are here attending from the public. So uh, the floor is open. I'll start, is it okay if I start? I'll start with questions and public comment and then I'll pass it to one of the guys to do more of the overview because they're more articulate on those things. Um, but for people who have pending water and sewer connections, um, if you make a down payment, you don't have to pay it in full. 
So if you make a down payment prior to January 1, then that would lock, in, lock you into the previous rate, to the current rate. And even if the project isn't completed until after January 1, even the balance that you owe is not subject to the rate increase. So it's kind of our way of grandfathering people in. Um, in addition, we had the conversation in utilities that um, were this to pass, that the township offices are going to work on a mailing to the people who would be impacted, sharing with them that the rate has um, increased, but that like the logistics of getting a down payment in January 1st to be locked into our current rate, not the new one. Is that accurate, Dan? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I got myself sometimes. <laughs> that was kind of my recollection. Um, can I throw it to you for an overview? Our rates right now are are very low, and to the point where you have people that are subsidizing some of the hookups at this particular time. This would make us more competitive than what you find in most other communities. But for those individuals in that particular area that are hooking up, they with just a deposit, they become locked in. So it encourages them to take that step and to make sure that we're able to get this project completed. Other comments? A couple other things to note is that a lot of these prices have not increased in, in a number of years. You can see on there five years, some of them ten years. Um, one of the things that uh, the, the, the sewer frontage rate is only going up by five dollars uh, for next year, which does not even come close to uh, getting to what the actual cost is. And so um, what I think we might see again next year is, is to raise that again to get closer to what the actual cost is. Uh, but what we did was uh, we left that down for the time being, knowing that we have so many people that are going to need to be hooking up. Hopefully most of them can do it by the end of the year and get even the, the more discounted rate. But if they, uh, if they wait until next year, they're still going to be getting, uh, compared to actual cost, uh, a significant discount. And we're going to be... Um, We'll see, but I, I anticipate this time next year, I would like to see that go up to the actual cost. Um, and at that point, hopefully there aren't too many more people that need to, to, to pay that for the, the near future. But um, I think this is a step to get the, the cost more, the more reflective of what the actual cost is. So the, with, the, with the sewer, though, still being a significant discount from what the actual cost is, will we charge a significant amount less even with this $5 raise. Then, so if somebody makes a deposit, say, in December to lock in those rates, when do they have, when does the balance do? Six months? Uh, as they get the next bill? Why don't I just go over a few things? Please cover it. But the way the assessments work, um, it depends if there's sewer main. If there's a sewer main and the bill is higher, then they have 20 years to make all the payments. So they can pay 5% down if there's sewer main. If there is no sewer main, for example, it's just a sewer hookup, and that bill would be 2800 then they have to pay 10% down. So they paid over 10 years. And so then it's $280 down, and then the payments are once a year with 3% interest. The first year, depending on when they pay it, they paid in December. The second year, or future years, we do bill them all in May. So all the bills would be in May. <coughs> second installment due in May with 3%, <coughs> and then it would be that same every year. I know another question came up about the six-inch going from uh, this water meter going from 18,000 to 28,000. I want people to understand what a six inch water meter does. And we have one installed in the township, just so you know. That's why we don't have prices for the meters because we have to quote them. Um, we have very few of these large meters. A six inch meter that we have, it's actually not in Georgetown. We have one in our system. And that was designed to serve a, a manufactured community with a hundred homes. And so that's how big that meter is. So it's a large meter. So it wouldn't affect a residential, uh, situation. And like I said, we've served very few, and I don't foresee any new ones coming in of that size, but that's the maximum size that we have in our system currently. So I'm just one of those. The ones that are typical residents are the ones with one asterisk. Is that accurate? If you had an existing home and you wanted to hook up to water today, you'd have the inspection fee here. You'd have a, you have to have pay a meter there. Yep, the one asterisk. And then here you'd have this fee for the hookup. So you'd have those three charges. Now, if you don't have a tap paid for, which in some cases, the tap has to be installed. That's this fee here. 
And so that's if there's a, it's a tap from the water main to the street. So uh, to give you an example of people paying those fees, so far this year I think we've had maybe two or three total um, who have had who have hooked up to water. But some could trigger fees now uh, to avoid, for example, if they wanted to pay their water main off. Some might pay their water main but not pay, not actually hook up. So there's a lot of different options people could take to avoid certain price increases. The water main is one of the longer ones. Uh, I'm trying to find it on here now. Water frontage per foot, you know, going from 18 to 25, but it was last done in 2006. So you're looking at a 13-year time frame since it was last adjusted. Part of the numbers for the prices come from our Edson Drive construction. So we did Edson Drive. We haven't done a lot of projects in the last few years, but Edson Drive gave us some numbers of what uh, what it's costing to like to put in sewer. And now that you've installed some sewer in streets, it's more of a, a significant importance of the amount of subsidy the residents pay toward the ones on, or that are benefiting from the sewer. And so the question isn't, you know, uh, how much you pay, it's who pays. Do the people benefiting from the utility pay or do the township residents as a whole pay? And in the past, the goal was to have the cost reflect the actual car cost to the residents. So that the residents who are benefiting from the installation would pay that cost. Now, we've been subsidizing it because we haven't been installing sewer uh, for quite a few years until the last two years where we started installing some. And now we're seeing the difference in the gap between our prices and actual current prices. And so our sub we've subsidized Elmwood and we're subsidizing Edson Drive significantly. And so that's important. So I know that was kind of a long answer, but that's what you're looking at. Dan, would you say our actual cost is maybe a, um, we're charging maybe a third less than our actual cost or 25%? Well, everyone's different. The, the last two were wet. And so uh, Edson Drive, for example, was wet. You have Elmwood wet. They're in the water. And so there's an additional cost of dewatering. And so in the past, you know, the dry areas all got done first, the less expensive areas. So you're seeing different scenarios occur. But, yes, um, we took an estimate would be more like in the 90-some dollars. It'd have to be the right price instead of the 70. So that's really what would be reflected at the actual cost. But there would still be some subsidy at this point but you're reducing the subsidy. So when Jason makes that comment, he wants to bring it, if things were to be increased in the future, his goal is to try to bring it in line with the way things have been done in the future, in the past. Pardon. Right, to have the people benefiting from the sewer directly pay the cost as opposed to the residents as a whole or the current customers who have already paid for their share. And those are the two choices. Do the current customers pay or the new future customers pay? So that's, the part, that's the balance you have to decide. So do we keep the house that's currently connecting low and have the township budget essentially, all taxpayers in the community subsidize it, or do we through the connection fees charge the home that's getting connected more to save it from being passed on to the rest of the residents? Decide what correct? that balance is. That's what you need to do is decide the balance of how much is subsidized by all versus a few. So because if it's not paid for here, then it ultimately gets taken out of the sewer connection fees or comes out of your rent. <laughs> So for your quarterly rates that you pay on your bills, then that would be the next place that uh, revenue would have to come from to, to handle that subsidy. So if you're installing sewer, if you don't install more sewer, then you don't have the same factor. It's just whether you're going to continue to uh, install sewer and additional street, which kind of is the direction to reduce the uh, issues. So the um, two current projects, the Elmwood project and the Edson Drive project, um, have been subsidized by current members. Is that correct? Current customers, yes. Current customers, that's what I meant, current customers. So could you give us just kind of a general breakdown of the numbers that the current customers are subsidizing for, let's take Elmwood as an example, um, or, or take Edson, uh, I'm just curious in well, terms of what current customers are, how much current customers are paying to subsidize. If you use Elmwood, for example, the total cost was 519000 plus engineering. And now you want to subtract the cost of the past, but you have to, of course, add the engineering. So if you took a net cost of 500000 the total revenue maximum potential of everyone connected uh, under today's prices would be 338000 And that includes the connection fees which shouldn't be used towards this cost. So that's the maximum revenue we collect. So the subsidy then comes from the rest of the residents. 
and they're connecting. So uh, that, that difference between that 389 or whatever you said it was and, 338, yep. and the, the, the actual cost, that difference, current customers subsidized in order to, is that correct? correct? But there's, there's been different subsidies from the hookup fees in the past, but yes, but current customers are subsidizing that cost. Correct. But we're not, with this change, if it were approved, we're not eliminating that subsidy, we're just reducing the amount of, the percentage of it, if you will. In effect, you're keeping up with inflation of the subsidy at a similar rate, but yes, that's $5. Is really along those lines. The five dollars keeps up with inflation. The five dollars doesn't really dig us out of the hole of subsidizing by the rest of the customers. customers. But it also depends which type of projects that are done, and each one is a vastly different amount of cost. But yeah, we charge the same rate, and so that's part of the equation. So if you have a shallower sewer, it's going to cost less, and especially if it's dry. Mm -hmm. So if a homeowner takes advantage of the sound. They, with a deposit, they can take advantage of the, the lower cost. Correct. Everyone who has sewer outstanding, who has been notified of sewer, and uh, will be able to pay at the current prices until December 31. They don't have to physically connect by that date. There's a distinction of paying and connecting. They still have to connect by their required date, whatever date that is, because they're different for different areas. But they can pay and lock in the price. And if, for example, with Hudson Drive, 70, I think just over 70% of the people who have already, because of the doing this sidewalk with us, have already locked in their prices. So, so for Mrs. Van Sell, if, if they come up with 10%, that would lock them in? Well, which address is that one? Hudson? Yeah, your price can be locked in. You can put it your company already, so. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, but yes, uh, Yes, they can. The Woodland one doesn't have sewers, so that's a different issue. There's no sewer there, so that's a different issue. Um, whether it was future installed or ordered to be installed, before that would be an issue. So that's a different factor to consider, but sewer is not currently installed, nor do we have an immediate plan, but I know we've talked about long term to install them. So. The 519000 on Elmwood, um, is that just the sewer, or does that include the forced main? The 519000 includes all the work in Elmwood. That's why I had to take out the payoff and enforcement. And the sewer and the road? And the road, correct. That's why you had to take those Not out. Not just the sewer. That's a lot of other stuff in there. Yes, it's the whole project. That's what I'm saying. But it's also a significant amount of difference. Yeah, that's why you said you had to take the path out because you really have to enter engineering into it as well. We should probably take the force main out too. Correct. The force main and the path both have to Now we're out. dropping that price. I just want accurate numbers. Sure. Yes. And that's just apples and oranges kind of thing. Correct. And that's why there's a big difference between the subsidy and, and Edson, which is way more expensive. And if, there again, you have the road costs that we replace as well. So Now you said these current costs are based on Edson and what that costs. Now, the sewer when I was at the utilities committee meeting where they were discussing these prices, it was all based on, well, we haven't raised it since 2014, 2008. But it was, you know, here's what the actual costs are. It was just based on calendar. That's why now this information comes out tonight that this is based on Edson. Did, did we go back and say, okay, how about the last five streets? So Edson is going to be the worst case scenario, Elmwood also, but right. I'm going to factor that in. We, don't, I mean, we only have two streets to work with in the last seven years, so we have, don't have others. But we were looking to try to get an accurate cost for the sewer lateral, and that's what I was talking about. The sewer lateral gave us Edson Drive numbers from that. The sewer main is still much higher yet. And so that was the target of needed to get into the 90 from dollars to start covering that cost. And so, but yeah, that's where that came from. And that's why the committee's like, that's too much to raise it and let's hold it down. So that's kind of why you have the balance there. So, and that's why I talked about maybe phasing it in over time uh, or adjusting it. So. That's why utilities, I would have liked to see more questions asked um, instead of just this is based on a calendar. It feels like we should raise the prices. If that goes, I, I look and uh, uh, we like to say, oh, we're lower, but to, to put some meat on that bone, the furniture per foot there under water hookup, Granville, I'm sorry, Hudsonville is at $75 per foot. We're proposing to go from 18 to 25 um, in Jamestown, which we think is more rural than obviously the city of Hudsonville, they're 34. Um, and for the sewer hookup, 
I'm uh, looking at that one. The uh, Hudson Hill is 110 per foot for frontage. We're looking at racing from 65 to 70. That's the 2017 number, by the way. And then Talent Township is 93. Um, and I can cite others, but the point is, it really is true. We're not just, of course, we're looking at our own costs and, and so on, but um, I mean, they're hiring the same contractors we are. They're doing the same type of work. This is, this is apples and apples. And, and they're obviously trying to not have their people subsidize perhaps at all um, or very little. So I, I do tend to think we need to shrink the amount of the subsidy on behalf of the, you know, the general taxpayer or, or user, you know. And I think that, you know, this is a dialogue that has been going on at utilities for quite some time to um, characterize our utilities meeting two weeks ago as like our entire conversation about this. Um, I, I just want to state for the record that that isn't accurate. This is something that, that has come up multiple times at utilities. So we've been talking about this is on our radar, this is part of our plan. We've asked our questions of Dan um, in utilities or by email or one-on-one. -on -one. You know, these, are, these have been ongoing conversations. Um, but we didn't want to hit the, the communities that were requiring or the homes that were requiring hookup with the increased fees right away, you know, simultaneously. We wanted to say get hooked up, we wanted to keep our fees the same, and now we're coming back. Um, so I appreciate um, that the, the opportunity, I guess, to say that this has been a long process and to say that one conversation two weeks ago at Utilities where we are all, where we were all in agreement that it is time. Um, we were all in agreement that it was time because we have done the legwork previously and we were just kind of waiting for the timing to have, you know, given a considerable amount of time for people to take advantage of the lower rates before getting connected because we didn't want to double whammy people. So that's just my two cents. I don't like when our intentions are mischaracterized um, when to make us look bad when that wasn't the way that it has gone at all. I, I agree with Becky and, and Dan has done a tremendous amount of legwork and research. He always does. And... Uh, Dan was uh, seven times ran for office in Georgetown Township and was elected. Uh, no one knows our township better than Dan, especially the layout of our sewer system. He knows the contractors, and when he makes a recommendation, it's, it's very well researched. He's also very open to us, not just at our meeting, but at any time we can walk into his office and he'll drop what he's doing and spend a tremendous amount of time going over details with us and educating us because it's a learning curve. <laughs> conditions change. Uh, I feel incredibly confident that uh, this is the best for our township, and um, these recommendations are, are, are needed. Uh, I take what Jason had said concerning should we have raised it even higher. I, I think that's a good point. But we didn't want to make it that dramatic all at one time. And so, uh, but that to me shows I'm he's looking long range. And Jim, from the numbers that you just read off, we are radically lower than other municipalities. And should our people be subsidizing to that degree, because nothing was done in the past, um, I think we have to take steps, and we're doing exactly what I believe we should be doing. And uh, it's a pleasure to work with these people. I think before we take a vote, I want to make sure, you know, Carol asked a couple of questions, and I think they've been addressed in terms of why the increase and what is the time frame? And Dan, you helped us in that respect. And certainly if there's more follow-up, any one of us, but uh, Dan in particular, I think is very capable of, of follow-up. But uh, Liz or Ms. Anderlock, you asked the question, and I'd like to encourage you in terms of the, the just the, the element of, you know, how, how do I afford this? Um, if you would um, either afterward tonight uh, come see Dan or Dan and I, or uh, if it's not convenient tonight, then, you know, business hours tomorrow or something. But, I want to make sure that you're aware of at least every possibility in terms of, of um, trying to make this uh, affordable for you. I'd be happy to talk to you about that, too. Yeah. What's, our, what's our current sewer, water and sewer balance? 6.7 million? Are you asking cash balance or fund balance? What are you asking? Cash balance. A moment, sorry. <coughs> I want to say it's like six and a half or something. Changes every day. But I guess my point with that too is, so how did we get all that huge cash balance? 
if we were losing money on all these hookups. This doesn't add up. Um, and we discussed that at our budget meeting that um, as we look towards the Grand Valley part of our community, it'll probably be expanding that we should have funds set aside that we're able to do growth and not have to go for a bond issue with the public. And we discussed I'd like to see this get pushed down farther down the road too after 400 people just got stuck with a $20,000 sewer hookup. Okay. I think timing is just a bad thing right now. I think balance is 4.7. 4.7. I think that also water and sewer fund isn't something that you deplete when you never know when you could have a water main break or something like that that needs to be repaired. You know, you, you, that's a place that you've got to keep a budget where you've got to, where you've got to keep some money in the bank to cover those unexpected repairs. Cause that's how you know something goes wrong, something breaks and then you gotta fix it. Okay. We're getting a touch exactly. defensive, but maybe I'll join in that thing too. And I did read somewhere on social media recently where there's a perception among some that the water sewer money is available to things like the library or other, uh, you know, expenditures of the township, and that's just not the case. All right? So I say that for the benefit of the board as well as the public. But I, I did want to mention, I mentioned, I forgot to mention on the Cottonwood Project, you know how we're replacing the water in there. It's the expensive part. I did want you to know, um, as they were digging up the line, the old line, when they were digging down to it, uh, when the pressure came off of one area, it just blew up. So it was going to happen. It was so, I mean, it was a break. In the, I mean, that doesn't justify it. I'm just saying as an example, that was one area that was going to blow up in an area and blow out a street. So, a brand uh, new so street if we hadn't. That, that was a save. Now, that's still a big investment, but yep. so it wasn't for. Oh, man, I can't help but think. So we have 4.7, did you say? Um, yes. Last year alone, that one pipe along Chicago Drive was a $5 million project. I mean, it, utilities doesn't spend large amounts for alcohol when they do the large amounts. <laughs> so. We debated about that expenditure because it had a, a, a life of 75 years. But this with, one on Cottonwood, right? On Cottonwood. And, but with the traffic and with the construction, they couldn't guarantee. So we debated, do we take a chance? And we decided to go with, we, ha we don't have to float a bond, we have the cash, let's put down a new pipe. And it's, it's great that we did, otherwise we'd have had a disaster on our hands with a brand new road. But they said with that equipment, you just don't know what it's going to do to a 50-year-old pipe. But we have no debt in the township. We pay cash for this. If we start to stop the way that we're, we're budgeting and saving the, for the future with sinking funds, we're making a huge mistake. All right. Uh, the motion is before us. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Same sign. Aye. And the motion is carried. Yeah, item number 11, second public comment period. This is uh, an opportunity now again for the public. Step forward and address the board. You've got three minutes. Identify your name and your address. And it could be an issue that we just covered. It could be something entirely different that you just want to talk about. So, um, Now, when we first moved in here, I came to the township, and I asked them because my father lives in Kentwood. He has not had to hook up the sewer for 50 years, still has a septic tank. We were told if it wasn't broke, we didn't have to fix it. Now, all of a sudden, you all get this idea in your mind that we need to do this. There's never been anything wrong with ours or our neighbors. And so this is a hardship. You might be saying that you've been telling us this for years, but for years, we've been trying to figure out how to work it and how to figure it out because we are not funny either. And we are farmers, and we do our best, but your thing is breaking us, and you have broke a lot of people. And just because you say that it's right, it's not right because you haven't talked or come door to door and said, hey, and when you guys' assessment people came through, you had a little paper. It said, you know, do you have wood floor or ceramic tile? What? There was never a linoleum. I'm a linoleum house. I can't afford different things, and I can't afford to upgrade, and because now I have this. But I was told when I moved here, and I came to this place, and I came to your meetings, and I came to that board, and I asked if we had to ever hook up, and the answer was no. If it wasn't broke, we didn't have to fix it. So now I'm asking you, what is the deal that this has to be done? And then down payment. You want this down payment before December. That's still a lot of money to try to come up. We as farmers don't get paid until next year. 
and I am out of work because I was in an accident. So now it really is a hardship for us as well, and to cover my medicine or to pay for your stuff. And so we were grandfathered in. What happened to that? You guys haven't addressed the grandfather. We were grandfathered in, and now it's being taken away from us. And does it make us all upset? Yes, it does. And then we had Paul Land come through who wanted to build these condos. And we were told that this was taking care of our laterals and whatever was taking care of, and that hasn't been addressed again to us either. And so are we frustrated? Absolutely we're frustrated because people are not in our shoes. And I wish you understood more like that. There's a lot of old people on my street as well that can't afford it either and are trying to figure out how we can do this together and how we can make it cheaper for everybody. But I'll tell you what, I want to know if I can hook up but not hook up. So we'll do all your things and hook up, but we're not paying the water and sewer bill because we're not going to be technically hooked up. We're going to do whatever it is to take it and, and hook it up. But there's a thing coming through that says that we don't have to pay for water and sewer. We can hook up, but then our sewer isn't, do we really have to hook up until our septic tank is done? So that's another issue that we've been trying to figure out as well. But again, guys, there's people that can't get anybody over because they are out there and they are not figuring this out. Thanks for my three minutes. I think, number one, you guys ought to put this up to public input again because you sit here and you say you've discussed this all at the meeting and why are you discussing it again now? Because if it's to impress us, it's not. That and when we, when they, they have, you guys have made a mess of my house on 40. I can't believe what you've done in the past 10 years. It's amazing. Some of you have been there to see some of it. But when you guys came through and you laid the pipe in front of the house, ripped up the street, and we, you gave us the choice. You said you can pay for it now, the frontage pipe, or you can wait until your sewer goes bad because you can't fix it once it's broke. But we just had a new one put in. So the whole septic system was brand new. There's nothing wrong with our septic tank or the drain field, anything. And I don't, like the neighbors or whoever may put poisons in, I don't, because we live right by the creek that goes through. So we don't do that. But for the people that possibly do, um, I can understand some of what you're saying with the water pollution, blah, blah, blah. But I, when they came through, they said you don't have to hook up or anything. You, have, you can pay for it or you can wait. It'll go up 2% a year. Well, ours was $11,000 then. We borrowed the money, forgot a home equity loan, paid for the 11 grand, and now, so we could have thought we were good because until you sell or your septic goes bad, you're fine. Well, then you turned around, we aren't sells, we weren't selling, but now all of a sudden, and there's people like her, if that's the case, because I was under this understanding that you had to, if you sold your house, you had to pay to hook up the sewer because that's what you told us. But now there's been a ton of people since those pipes have, the pipes have been laid in Denison that have sold their house. I have friends who bought, and they are sitting three years ago, and they, the seller was not made to hook up. So I need you to explain that. It's not the most rule then, but it's not a rule now. Does that only apply to, I don't, do you know what I'm saying? Do you remember when that went through? No? Do you? Does anybody? You've been here a while. Do you remember when that went through and they said you can, you know, the pipes are laid, you can pay for it now, but you don't have to hook up, which is what you're saying, right? Okay, so why, why now all of a sudden are you going, yeah, this has to, our grandson's brain. <laughs> anyway, so now all of a sudden, why did they have to hook up? The, the seller should have done it then, if that was the original thing. And so I know what Kim's saying, that the pipe goes through and you don't have to, like with us, we didn't, we're not hooked up yet, but, and I don't want to, to be honest with you, because the water bill increases three, three times, right? Goes up three times as much as what you're paying, right? As to when you're hooked two years, when you just have your subject tank. And Mr. Menier, I realize that $5 probably isn't much to you. I know you're not so close to whatever, but $5 is a lot of money to some people. That's all right. A friend of mine wanted to know, a business person, um, wants to know how much the Kmart property is selling for. Okay. That's something we can Answer share with you afterwards. Yeah. Yep. It's, by the way, it's sold. So not is selling for, but sold. Yep. 
It's been sold for a period of time, yep. Yep. Anyone else wish to address the board? John Cade, 7869 Parkside Court. I have four or five items that I hopefully you can answer during discussion. I know you won't answer them now. Um, you said tonight that you can pay a deposit of 5 or 10%. Do people really know about this? Because I have a feeling people don't really know that. Have you advertised that? You know, who, who, who in the public that's affected by this knows that they can pay 5 or 10%? and not have to pay a lot more. I would think that would be something you should advertise. And then you refer to, you didn't use these words, but your easy payment plan over 10 or 20 years at, I believe, 3% interest. What happens to that 3%? Where does, what fund does it go into? So when you go into discussion, if you could please tell me what fund that 3 or 3% 3 goes into for the next 10 or 20 years. And um, Carol, regarding the um, property taxes, yes, they are low in, in Georgetown Township. However, Carol referred to Granville, Wyoming, and Hudsonville that they're higher. Yes, they are, but you left out those are cities. They're not townships. Um, also, I had my first comment I mentioned about the 12.4 million and then being corrected, it's really 11 million and 1.4 million is operating. For 2019, 1.4 million to operate the library. What is the current budget to operate the library? If you could let me know that during 1.4 million seems pretty expensive for a library, for the people that work there and I realize there's a lot of other costs, but 1.4 million, I mean, I run a business and I don't have overhead of 1.4 million. Um, since there's still a 56 seconds, um, I do understand what you said about, or I, I don't understand it, but I acknowledge that you, for the 2 million that is in the 2018 budget, that you're not going to exceed the 12 million. But why don't you, put the 2019 budget down for the library down to 11 million, and then in 2019, you can make an amendment. You can make an amendment that you did not spend the 2018 money, so you're then putting it into 2019, just like you did two weeks ago. You made an amendment to the budget. So why not, make, why not put, so the way you got it now, people will cons consider, you really got 13 million. If you've got 11 million, in the 19 budget and 2 million in the 18 budget, that's 13 million. You're not supposed to exceed 12 million. So why not knock it down to the correct number and then in 19, in 2019 make an amendment? So if you could please address those as during discussion. Thank you. And anyone else? I'm Gary Belnick. I live at 2158 Edison Drive, or as we call it, the road to Baghdad right now. Um, I have a little issue. Uh, when I come to these meetings, decisions are made and they seem to be rescinded. Um, when Edison Drive was pushed through to have sewer sidewalks, the agreement was that the condos were going to have sidewalks also. Now I heard from the neighbors saying they're not going to have sidewalks. If that's the case, do I have to come to every meeting to make sure that you fulfill what you say you're going to do? Because I'm, from what I understand, 18th Avenue is not going to have sidewalks on the condos. So you guys had a spine at one time, but now you don't. I also understand that 16th Avenue is not going to get sidewalks, and that was decided at the same time at Edson Drive. I'm spending $20,000 to put sewer and sidewalks in my yard with the agreement that those sidewalks were going to close the loop. And that loop was 18th Avenue down towards Waterford and Port Sheldon. The loop was to be closed down 16th Avenue all the way to Van Buren. That was the deal. I didn't come to another meeting, so I figured that was decided. But between the meeting where you shoved $20,000 down my throat, you changed somewhere along the line. That's wrong. It's just like when we decided we were going to put sewer. You said I had 18 months to make a decision to hook up. 
Now you're saying tonight that I need to come up with a down payment by the first of the year to do that. That's not what you said. You said you're going to run sewer. You have 18 months to hook up. And it's according to the numbers that we agreed upon when sewer is decided on Hudson Drive. So, again, you guys have changed your mind. This is not, this is only within the last few months, gentlemen and ladies. This is wrong. That's not how things work. You sit there and you quibble about subsidizing sewer. You sell a, uh, ice arena and you're subsidizing hockey players over there. You sold a $4 million asset for a million bucks. Now who's subsidizing? You guys cannot talk out of both sides. Start utilities. You figure 30 bucks a foot just for sidewalks the way it is estimated on Edson Drive. So there's a, there's a discrepancy of what utilities cost and what they don't cost. As far as sewer, water, sidewalks, storm sewer, you guys got to get your numbers in a row to figure out what you're talking about. That's all I got to say. Okay, seeing no one else, we'll close the second public comment period. Item 12, discussion and general information among the board. Anybody have anything they wish to bring before the board this evening? Prior to closure of the meeting. I'll answer John's question about people not knowing about making a down payment to lock in their rates. We had to approve the rate increase tonight before we can advertise it. It wouldn't have made sense when we hadn't locked in the new rate effective January 1st. It wouldn't have made sense to pre-advertise it. But now that that new rate is locked in for January 1, the office staff here is going to work on a mailing to all of the impacted homes to let them know what the down payment amount would need to be and what the due date for that would need to be in order to lock in the current rate. So that is going to happen. We are going to advertise it the best that we can. Um, we just, you know, the dominoes have to fall in the right order, and this was the first one. Each one of the homeowners, well, many of them will have a, a different cost. Some of them have part of it done, some do not. So it'll have to be figured out manually and individually sent to each one. The Dan's on it. Okay. I, I wanted to indicate, I mean, there were a couple of good questions, sort of you know, fine detail questions that John raised. Would you be you more than welcome? I, I was going to say, more than welcome to see you after the meeting, or right. if you wish. No, go ahead. What are you? Three uh, percent interest. The interest goes to the water sewer fund fund, um, the source of the money. Uh, interest follows the principal. Um, the deposit questions in the initial letter to each person that was required to hook up, it, it indicated that there was a payment plan available on the interest rate. Um, uh, the library budget for 2018 was <laughs> 1.6 million, so the 1.4 is actually a reduction uh, for the library. Um, water rate, someone asked what it costs to hook up this, or for sewer bills. The average bills for a quarter are between 54 and $80. Somewhere in that range, that's the average, depending on the consumption, of course, but in that range per quarter, so less than 30 a month, but it's still a significant increase, especially if someone's a low water user, it's still a large increase. So I think that's the questions I wrote down. Um, the question about uh, sewer being hooked up by sale, often that's a mortgage company requirement and it was not a township enforced requirement until most recently. And so I know people are told that, we hear that a lot, um, and realtors tell people that, there's a lot of people told that, but uh, that's not something that I'm aware of the township's done until in the last two years when the utility committee uh, brought that to the board to start that process uh, then. But certainly the rumors are out there and uh, um, were not controlled by us or started by us, so people was not enforced on hookups. There were some homes that were required hookup even more than 10 years ago, uh, those that had initial dry sewer in the line. So some people were forced to hook up when they had dry sewer, and that sewer was made live. And so that was some mandatory hookups earlier. Uh, back in the 80s, all homes had a hookup. That was mandatory because there was federal subsidy, and that was a requirement to get that subsidy that you had to enforce hookup. So a lot of the original old sewer had mandatory hookup. And then in the 80s, after that federal program ended, so did the enforcement of that provision. And so that's why you have some confusion about enforcement if you're going way back into the 80s. And so those projects at that time, uh, the federal government contributed, and as part of that, hookup was mandatory. And uh, to get that money, that was a requirement. So at the end of that program. I think I addressed those questions that I wrote down. Some came a little faster than I could write, but I think I... Yeah, and I, I don't know with the library budget. Look, we had a capital outlay of like 170,000 last year. That if 
I mean, if that were somehow seen as toward this project or what have you, and you were to back that out, it'd still be roughly the same as what we're proposing. Uh, right. Even if it weren't a reduction, it's a de minimis change. Um, I don't, you know, I'll just say this as we end, and I appreciate the give and take with the public. We really need to, we need to hear, and we hear in a variety of ways. Sometimes it's here to me, <coughs> on the phone, sometimes it's by email and otherwise. Um, I don't want the end of our meetings, too, to be, um, uh, to begin to take the character of we've got to respond to every question that's been mentioned. There are good questions, but there are different ways to respond. So I just encourage everybody to use their, their discretion. Sometimes it's very unsatisfying for someone from the public to ask a question. You wait, you answer it at the end, but there's probably more give and take that would give a more complete answer and a better dialogue. So um, it, it might actually be more effective rather than feel like you have to or that we have to answer each question right then than to either stay after the meeting or to, you know, pull together those that might be on the utilities committee and have special knowledge about it. Or maybe it's Dan, or maybe it's a zoning issue, it's Manette, or whomever. It could be Michael, it could be any one of us, okay? Carol with the treasurer's spot. It, it, I, I just want you to have the freedom, because I feel like we're missing a little bit of the dialogue we formerly would have about just other things board relevant. Um, and sometimes I think I get my thoughts get bogged down in that to where I forget what I otherwise would like to discuss, you know, sort of as an ancillary matter at the end, but that's just an aside, all right? There's different ways that we can, we want to be responsive, but I think there's different ways we can do that. Um, and uh, so, is there anyone else here before? I was just going to say, with uh, John Cade's question about 1.4 million operating costs with library, um, 2016 and 2017 were roughly a million operating costs. It wasn't 2018. I was budgeted at 1.6, but the actual was just over a million. So then that extra money. Now that extra money goes to the general fund that was budgeted. That's all part of it. In a library, it used to go into this fund that we're using to build the library, but now it will go into the general fund. It's just not spent, correct? So roughly just over a million, a million fifty-seven thousand back in 2016, a million eighty thousand. Was the actual expenditures? Yeah. Right? Yeah. The actual. So. So, Mr. Chairman, that just proves um, the point that a budget is a guideline. Yep, and that was the same concern I had, too, about that $11 million added to the budget. Well, we already got $2 million as a budget amendment at the last meeting. Um, but it's, because it's budgeted, it doesn't mean it's going to be spent, just the budget. But I'll be keeping an eye on the bills because we were, well, taxpayers were promised it's going to be under $12 million, So I'll be watching. All right. Move to adjourn. Support. Support it. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion is